spend a few minutes talking about styling forms, then we're going to get into tables. Uh, this is week 13, all right? So we have week 13, 14, and 15. So there is uh, two classes this week, two classes next week, and then two classes the last week. What I aim to do is, after I talk about forms today, we'll talk about tables. We'll probably have some things to wrap up about tables next time on Thursday. We'll start JavaScript. We'll go over JavaScript for three or four lectures, and I'll probably will give one class at least devoted as a work day for you to ask questions, showcase your project to other people, and so on. So that's kind of the plan. Essentially, finishing up forms today, tables today and next time, JavaScript, and a work day. Okay, so here is a form that I spent some time in. I alluded to this last time, and I know we kind of got past it, and many of you probably already turned in uh, that, but um, here's a good way to style a form, and we'll look at some of the things that we did here. This form doesn't connect to anything, so if I hit submit, it sends it to process PHP, but there is no process PHP, so it just gives you an error. Um, if you notice, I broke down the forms into fee, uh, the form in the field set. And that's good for accessibility, plus it just helps with the general design and, uh, and makes it easier. If your form is too long, you might want to consider going to like a wizard sort of thing where you have different pages of the form. And that would require some scripting as well. Um, and anyhow, in this example, I put everything in the one file. That doesn't mean that it's a good idea and you should start doing that. All right? I did it just in the interest of simplicity. All right? You're still better off putting stuff in its own file. So, if you noticed before, we have an, L, uh, uh, an unordered, unordered list to contain the forward inf form information. Actually, we have an unordered list for each field set. Each form element is an LI that consists of a label and then a form field, which is pretty much what we did before. All we really added this time was the styling to it. Um, let's look at the styling. I got rid of the dots. I put space between each thing by putting a margin on the bottom for each LI. So if you notice this, there's a little bit of space between things. Otherwise, things sort of run together. Each label, I've given a width of 150 pixels, made the display inline block, and said text align right. The width is to give each one a consistent width, and the right alignment is to line up everything on the right. Inline block is used because, again, some of these attributes only work for block tags. So I want to, work, I want to, I want to give this some of the block attributes, but I still want it to be an inline tag. And that's exactly what inline block means. It means that you can give block attributes to a tag that still is inline. So what this does is, and I'll temporarily give a background color on this, just so that you can see it. It makes all the labels the same width so that when I right align them, I have a nice little margin here. And then the form fields are right next to it. Um, you don't have to do this, but I think this is kind of a neat way to do this, to do a, a form. Submit, bu submit button, I wanted it shoved over a little bit from the left. So I shoved it over. I gave the text area a height and a width. All right? To uh, make it a certain size. 
You can also give that via HTML attribute, remember. But again, it's always better to give any visual attributes via the CSS. Now, this is a neat professional looking form, I would say. And notice how little effort it took to get that. If I take out the style, the form looks very, very, very rudimentary. I mean, it looks, it's functional, I suppose, but it doesn't look very well at all. With, by just putting in a little bit of styling to it, I think you make it look tons better. And you could even do more than that if you want. You know, you could uh, color code the uh, field sets. So you could say field set, not color code, but give them a different background color. Background. Um, let's give it pound sign. A, 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 A. that way. Uh, I think I like that a little bit better. I could make the legend bigger. And so on. I mean, I could apply all the CSS rules that you could apply in other cases to make it look the way that we want to. Remember, what did we do for accessibility for it? We did essentially two things. We put the field sets there and we put the labels and associated the labels with the appropriate form control. All right? Questions about this? Take the time to style your forms is sort of the, the lesson of this. Take the time to style everything, all right? Because uh, you can see that paying attention to the little details is one of the, um, I think is one of the important aspects of design and it really can elevate things and make them look a lot better, a lot more professional, a lot more user. You know, just something like putting a little bit of padding on a paragraph so it's not right up against the border. You know, really, I think, goes a long way. All these little touches, you know, all these little details. You know, there's, you know, if you read about um, the way Apple computers are designed, you know, Steve Jobs was obsessive about things. And he wanted to create an experience. And, you know, you could argue that maybe he took it too far in some cases. But, you know, things like he wanted it to sound a certain way when you closed your laptop literally, all right? Uh, he wanted the box to be a certain way when you unpacked it, so that was an experience. It's amazing the attention to detail uh, to that. And again, I'm not suggesting that we all become that obsessive to details, but by paying attention to the little details, I think you can really elevate and make uh, pages that are okay really look good, all right? And again, I'm not saying that this looks really looks good, but it clearly looks a lot better than the unstyled version. Okay, so that's about all I had for forms, including the styling. So I covered pretty much everything I wanted to. Now on the tables, all right? Those of you that did web design a long time ago, and again, it's getting to the point where fewer and fewer people meet this criteria, but tables were used for achieving layouts. People would put tables on their web pages to get a certain layout, to get a grid layout, for example. Well, we've seen the flexibility and the versatility of CSS and how CSS you can achieve kind of whatever layout you want with the flex flow lay a layout and the uh, grid, grid and floating and all that. We've seen a lot of good ways to achieve a layout with CSS, which is a very flexible way to do things. If you happen to ever see anyone that uses a table for layout, know that that's an old, 
outdated, obsolete practice that you should not follow. If you ever see an example that says, well, we're going to lay out this page and we're going to put a table on it to lay it out. No. Don't do that. If you don't really know what I mean, probably don't worry about it. You might never see a case of that. But what tables are, despite the fact that I just said don't use tables for this, there is an appropriate use for tables. And that is to show a table of data. What do I mean by a table of data? I mean something that you'd get like in an Excel worksheet, if you had an Excel worksheet. So, you know, let's say you had something like this. Let's go into Excel. You have rows and columns. So let's say you have something like this is the average temperature for April across, or average temperature by month for some U.S. cities. And I'm just going to do a few months because I don't feel like typing in 12 going across, but maybe you have Atlanta for January. February and March. And then you have Dallas or Cleveland for January, February, and March. And then you have Dallas and Denver. And then so on down the line. Maybe Atlanta in January is 60 degrees, in February it's 65, and in March it's 67. Cleveland is maybe. 10 degrees, 15, and 20. Although really Cleveland ranges from minus 50 below to uh, 98 degrees in all of these months, as we know. Uh, Dallas might be 70, 72, and 74. And Denver might be 60 to 63 and 68. Okay, so this is a table because there's rows and columns. All right, that's what we mean when we say a table of data. All right, the only way to represent this really in HTML is with table tags. Because if we try to put this in HTML without table tags, we're going to end up with a mess. Because you remember that in HTML, any space that you put in uh, gets reduced to a single space. So if I try to spa put spaces between the words to make them line up right, it's not going to work. It's going to boil them all down to one space. There are ways where I can use a non-breaking space character to actually put the actual spaces, but even that is very difficult and very labor intensive and is prone to break down if you start changing stuff. So let's go and let's create an HTML file. And let's try to duplicate this in HTML. What I mean is if we try to do this, I'm going to get rid of the style. If we try to do this, Atlanta or uh, January, February, March for Atlanta. Cleveland. Dallas. Denver, and I'll just I'll just put in X's for the temperature. I thought I would. Just as 
save you having to watch me type. I'll just do this. All right, if I were to save this and view it, you know it's not going to look like that. What is it going to look like? It's going to be one line of data. All right, so that's not very effective. So what we want to do is we want to put it in a table, and we want to define that we have a table that has rows and columns in it. So we're going to use some table tags, and there's a few very basic table tags which are used, and then there's some other table tags that are sometimes used. So you have like four main table tags, and then there's a handful of other table tags that are also used. All right, so the first tag is, oddly enough, the table tag. That's where it, that's where you say, hey, this is where the table starts. This is where the table ends. So everything be, uh, inside that is our table data. So we're going to treat it that way. A table is a collection of rows. All right. So we think of each table as having rows. So let's forget this for now, the, the caption on the table. But this table has five rows in it. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Each row has four columns in it. One, two, three, four. So the first, and, and typically most Simple tables have the same number of columns in every row. That's not an absolute requirement, but typically that is the case. So we're going to first create four rows. The way it works is you define each row, and you, you do, then you define the columns that are in each row. And it will line up the data based on the first column of this row. It will line up with the first column of the next row, and so on down the line. So, our first row is a TR. So I'm going to put in my start and end TRs. And I'm going to do that for four times, because I have four rows. Five times, because I have five rows. So I've defined my five rows. I am now going to put in the values for each, for each row. Now the first row, if you notice, has a blank column, and then it has January, February, and March. Okay? Now, January and February and March, along with Atlanta, Cleveland, Dallas, and Denver, are different than the rest of the data. Right? These are temperatures. These are more or less headings. This tells you what the data means. A heading is something that tells you what the data means. So we can look at this and say 15 degrees. What is that? We look up to the column heading and we look over to the row heading. 15 degrees is February's temperature for Cleveland. All right? So we go across and up to see the headings that relate to that. Then we know what that data means. All right? 15 is the value for February for Cleveland. Okay. So, February, January, February, March, Atlanta, Cleveland, Dallas, and Denver are different than the numbers. They're headings. So, the tag that we use for headings is different from the tag that we use for data. The data is contained in TD tags. The headings are contained in TH tags. So, this one... We can put city in here, let's say, because that defines what that row means. So we have city, January, February, March, and this. These are all headings. So I'm going to make my first row contain four TH tags. And you can put it on its own line. You can put it on different lines. It doesn't matter, remember. Again, we talked about that for a long time. 
But we're going to put TH January, February, and March. Now, so that's the first row of this table. Each subsequent row contains TDs and THs, right? So if we look at, at this, Atlanta is a heading, right? That tells you what these numbers mean. It's Atlanta's temperature. So this row is going to have one TH and three TDs. And I'm just going to put in X's because I don't feel like making up realistic data and so on. Okay. Then we'll do that for the other three cities. save this and view it in the browser. We see, oh, that was my old data. I'm going to get rid of that. That was my first sorry attempt to put a table here. So let's get rid of that. All right. So this is what we have for this. It's a table. Notice that there are five rows because I have five TRs. Each row has four columns because each row has a total of four THs and TDs. Both THs and TDs are table columns. The difference is THs are used for headers, TRs are used for table data. All right? So, this lines up with this because each of these are the first column in their respective rows. This lines up with this because it's, again, the fourth column in each of the respective rows. Questions about this so far? How did it come up with the size of the table? How did it come up with the size of each column? based on the largest thing in there, right? So in other words, Cleveland is the largest word in the city column, so that's what made the city column the biggest thing, all right? Now, it's kind of hard to tell for January, February, and March because they're all three letters, so they're all approximately the same thing. But if I go in and make a change to something, if I say January, then the table expands to account for that. Okay? Or if I make, really gets hot in Atlanta in January. Actually, I wanted to do that in February. because we already have a wide column there. All right, that makes the January bigger. So the size of each column is determined by the size of the biggest field uh, in that column. 
All right. Now, can you notice anything visually different about the THs and TDs? THs are bold. What else about the THs compared to the TDs? Yeah. Uh, it's a little hard to tell with this data, but TDs are centered, where THs are left aligned. Now, keep in mind, we're talking just about the default behavior. All right? Because remember, we can change any of the default behavior you want. Now, it's important not to lie to your browser. All right? What do I mean by lying to your browser? In other words, don't look and say, hey, I want the city to be left aligned and not bold. Therefore, I'll make it a TD. No. If you want city not to be bold or, and left aligned, then you change the CSS to make cities left aligned and not bold. You use the tag that is appropriate, that is fitting for the data, based on what kind of data it actually is. The city is a heading, right? So it doesn't matter what I want it to look like. I can change that via CSS. So always use the right tag, the appropriate tag, in defining the tags, and then use your CSS to get it to look the way that you want it to. OK, questions? All right, we're going to put a couple of other things in here. One thing we're going to do is we're going to put, and I never remember this, I have to look it up. I never remember if it's called a legend or a caption. It is a caption. You can put a caption on your table. And a caption on the table is simply a little summary of what the table is. That is useful for people um, that are viewing it with a screen reader, but it's useful for everyone else too. All right? So the caption goes right after the table tag and gives a, just a quick, like a title. So caption average temp by month in select U.S. cities. I would say that would be a good caption for this. All right. And it's not going to make the table any wider to fit the caption in because the table size is determined by the width of the biggest columns, uh, the biggest field in each column. All right, now let's get to styling this because this is a pretty plain table and we might things to look, we might want things to look different. All right, first of all, uh, let's play with the width. All right, if I do this, it's a good thing to do when you're sort of first learning a, a, a new technology, a new programming technique or whatever, is to play around with it. We've observed what a table's default width is. It's the biggest column, it's the, the sum of the, the widest values in each column. What if I give the table a width this way, though? Table equals table with 600 pixels. All right. It's going to make the width of the table 600 pixels, but how big is it going to make each column? That's the question. Is it going to make them even or what? Well, let's see. All right. It's a little hard. is still bigger than city and January, and it looks like March is the smallest column of them all. So in other words, if you define a table width, it makes the columns proportional. 
So the biggest column there is still going to be the biggest column. It's just going to take up more space than it would otherwise. And the littlest column is still going to be the littlest column. How can we see this for sure? We could put a border around the TDs and the THs. So let's do this. Let's put a border around the TDs and THs. solid black and that's what we get notice there's a little tiny space in between them all right in other words the borders don't touch each other there's a little gap between them you can ask for the borders to collapse so that there is no little gap like that and you do that this way on the table, you can say border collapse. Collapse. And what that will do is that will get rid of the little gap between them. So now it's pretty obvious to us that the March one is the narrowest column because the data in that column is the narrowest. And February is still the biggest, and city and January are about the same size because Cleveland, the word Cleveland and the word January are probably about the same width. All right, so other things that we can do. What if we don't want, do we want the TDs to be bold and centered? No? Okay, let's get rid of that. So let's get rid, and we'll do it a couple different ways. Let's get rid of the TDs as being bold and centered. So what I can do is, oh, I'm sorry, the THs. So I can say TH font weight normal, text align, left. And we have it organized like that. All right. We still kept them as THs, right? It's important to know. But we cho chose to... Uh, just not, um, not bold them and not center them. What is a different way that we could show that that is the header? Put a background, Put a background color on it. So let's do th's background. Pound. It's spring. Let's let's shoot for a color of green. So let's shoot for Is that a color of green? Yes. Because RGB, this is the red, this is a G, and this is the B. So the blue and red component of it are less than the green component of it. So this will be some shade of green. I don't know what it is, but we'll find out. Okay. Eh, do I like that? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's try. Let's try for a real pale shade.
making those numbers higher so the color should be getting lighter. All right. And sure enough, it is. Yeah, let's stick with that. It's a nice color. Okay. What if I want, all right, here's a good one. What if I only want the city to be bold, to, to be, have the background color, and I don't want the, let me rephrase that. I want this first line to be a different color, and I don't want these to be a different color. Uh, put an ID or a class. It's probably better to put a uh, class on it because for a couple reasons. First of all, I want several things to be treated differently, right? I want all four of those top TD or THs to be treated differently. An ID, you can only identify one thing. So as, with, as far as a class, I could put the same class on a bunch of things. Another thing is you can actually put a, uh, uh, a um, you can put multiple classes on the same thing. And that's kind of nice, too. Um, so what I could do is I could define a class for top header. And then I could give that the background color. And then I can put that color or that class on... Yes. Yeah, to the TR. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that when we're done. And that would be another valid way, too. Okay. So I move that style rule for the background color to the class top header. And I've done that. And now it is at the top line. To your question, could I make it an ID? I probably could. Here I said THs and, and TDs. 
Here I overwrote it for THs, so the second one won. Now, here's another important thing to realize, that actually this row, let's put it back to where it was, this row actually gets style rules from three different things. All right? It gets a style rule for the border from this guy. It gets a style rule for the font and the alignment for this guy. And it gets a style rule for the background color from this guy. All right? Is that okay? Yes, it's okay. Again, it works. So, yes, it's okay. And how does it work? Well, it works a couple different ways. If, as long as they are doing things to different attributes, then it will get all of them. If it's doing things to the same attribute, actually, the last one will win some of the time. Other times, the more specific one will win. So the more specific one takes precedence over the last one. So an ID is very specific. So that usually takes preference. What do I mean by that? Let's say I put a background color on this rule. I make it yellow. All right. Let's see what color that background turns out to be. It turns out to be yellow. All right. So I lied. All right. I lied on the details. I didn't lie on the principle. The principle is, is a TH is more specific to this element than an ID on a TR is. All right. This is pointing to, uh, another way I heard, I, I use the word specific. I've also heard the closer it is to the element. So this TH is right on the element. So that applies. I, I should have known this one. But again, you still, I still have to experiment sometimes with these because it's not always crystal clear which rule applies. But do be aware that multiple rules can apply. And if you're not mixing attributes, if you're doing different attributes, everything's okay. If you are uh, doing the same attribute in the different rules, then there's a, a rule that says which one wins. All right? And you should be aware of that and make sure that it turns out the way that you want it to. How do you suppose I would make the columns equal with? All right. I want to make the columns equal with regardless of how the um, data is in the table. Style what on percentages? TDs or THs, yeah, or both. So I could put in for a, a TH with 25%. Now I've taken control of the width. So the browser defaults go away. So if I say width of 25%, then they all get the same width regardless of the size. So even though February is wider than March, March gets the same width for that. This is a real good illustration, and that's why I'm taking the time to, to go over it and point things out of exactly how CSS works. How your page is determined by a combination of browser defaults and your CSS. The browser defaults are what you get when you don't apply any CSS. Or if your CSS doesn't address a particular attribute. So, like, for example, I didn't say anything about the color of the text. All right? Yet the color of the text is black. Why is that? Well, the browser default is to make text black. All right? So that's why the text is black. Until I did something with the color, the background for everything was white. Where did that come from? That come from the browser. That came from the browser defaults. The font of Times New Roman or whatever that is, that came from the browser defaults. Now, the other things come in and get applied according to the rules of CSS, which, again, as I indicated, cascade. 
I can say I can set a rule and then set a more specific rule to override it if I want to. Okay, this is where we'll leave off next time, or, or this will leave where we'll leave off now. Next time we'll come and we'll play around with styling more, and we'll learn some cool things that you can do. We'll talk about a little bit about accessibility with tables. We'll go over some less used tags. I mean, just about every table that you use has ths, trs, and tds. Uh, some tables have a few extra tags as well. Uh, and we'll wrap up tables on Thursday, and we'll probably get into the beginning of JavaScript on Thursday. All right, so I'm going to go grab my files, or I'm going to go unlock the door, then I'll come back, grab my files, then I'll be back in my office.